seven lovely years in the deals. I know. It was sort of part of your life for such a long time. It's a strange thing to let it go, isn't it? I absolutely love my time there. I love the people there. The crew are amazing. Such a, a special time, you know, but like everything, sometimes it has to come to an end. An emotional actually filming those scenes for in real, I mean, because yeah. you're just thinking it has been, it's a chapter closed, I guess. Yeah, and I think for me, like, the, the funeral scene was really emotional. Michael Prade, who played Frank, he, we were so close. And, you know, knowing that I wasn't going to see him again or act with him, it was so, it was really hard, but... Everybody was there. Everybody who I wanted to be, you know, there was there. And I felt so wonderful to be able... I felt like that was my exit in lots of At ways. At least you just left this time in a taxi and you didn't die hanging the bush in there. <laughs> <laughs> <Because> yeah. <laughs> that's that, that, that was That's dramatic, isn't it? That was very dramatic, that um, death scene in Coronation Street, yeah. I remember leaving the makeup chair and I actually looked blue. I felt like a smell. <laughs> I was like as blue as your suit. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, are you sure? I mean, I know I've been dead an hour because it was the episode afterwards. Um, but actually on screen, it doesn't look that blue. It still looks a bit blue, a little tinge of blue, but not too bad. But you're also, um, it's kind of open if you ever want to go back, isn't it? If you don't die hanging the washing out. That's true. So if you go in a taxi, if you do want to go back, you can <laughs> go back. As good as you can exactly. go, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. And, <laughs> so, you know, never say never, so. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? You and part know. of your... The reason is you, that you've, you've got teenage kids, haven't you? And it's funny, cos people always associate wanting to spend more time at home actually being with younger children, mm. but actually teenagers almost need you a bit more, don't they? Mine definitely do, you know, yeah. and especially my son. He's he's a real mummy's boy. <laughs> in lots of ways, he'll hate me saying that. <laughs> but he, he really is so sensitive, and he, he's always... I've really missed you, and if he goes away, he's always like, I've missed you loads, and he texts me and stuff, and... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing his street ped any good. <laughs> <laughs> and he <laughs> still make his breakfast, I read. I know, he yeah. is hopeless. Aww. He actually is hopeless. He can't do anything. <laughs> oh, no. He'll come down and sit there, you know, having wanted all this independence and everything, but then he comes down and sits down and goes, uh. Where's my breakfast? <laughs> and I'm like, Oliver, you've got to become independent here. You want to be let out till four o'clock in the morning and roll in. Yeah. And you've got to learn to do your breakfast as well and make your mummy a cup of tea. Well, we were talking earlier there just about the, the whole social media and what comes with it, particularly as a, as a teenager. Yeah. Where do you stand um, with your children and how much access do they have? Are they on all of the platforms? Um, they do, like, Snapchat and stuff. Yeah. And I know they do Instagram. I hate it. I really, really hate it. I hate the what, what it does to them. I mean, my daughter once was... Com I came downstairs and she had, like, black hair. And I was like, what, what have you done to your face? I thought she'd, like, been down a chimney or something. And she said, oh, I'm contouring because yeah. I want to have cheekbones. I hate this, you know, the collagen that we all want and pay for. Oh, <laughs> God. Um, yeah, and she's desperate to get the cheekbones and, and then, you know, the blue eyes because she's seen herself with blue eyes and she thinks she looks nice with blue eyes. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. Yeah. And, you know, when I take her phone off her sometimes, if she misbehaves, <laughs> um, yeah, she can... She, How old is she? She's grounded at the moment, actually. <laughs> she's 50. <laughs> and I take, I've taken her phone off her and I said, right, that's it. And often, at the end of the week, when, you know, I'll say, do you want your phone back? You're much happier without it. And she goes, I am, I am actually happier without it. And what's she grounded for? Oh, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Being a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is just driving me crazy. Lily, the millennial. I'm a millennial. You don't understand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> All the time, you don't understand us millennials. We need to have our phones and we need to be on social media. And I'm going... I've been through it all. I just didn't have that phone there. Yeah. It's a much happier life. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's exactly Ooh. right. But like we say, you, you're, you're leaving Emmerdale to do other things alongside yeah. the family and keeping it with the family, working with your mum again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've kept working with her, but just not acting with yeah. her. So I'm doing Band of Gold. I, I'm so excited. We've got such a brilliant cast and I can't wait to work with her as a director again. So she comes from it from that kind of, you know, from an acting point of view as well. And a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. totally. You know, we were talking earlier about the whole James Bond, Jane Bond thing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, you should definitely but, do that. <laughs> I'm a bit too old to do the high oh. kicks these days. <laughs> um, but, you know, your mum has always written kind of powerful female mm. roles for a very long time, long before everybody was sort of shouting about it. Well, that's what Band of Gold was. I mean, it was, it was making 
the four females leads, the leads, and you know, portraying working girls as as heroes. You know, these were were people working because they were desperate. You know, they had to do this. It's not we just didn't glorify it at all. It was as it was. You know, it was grit and. But then there was a love story involved. There was uh, who done it? You know, it's a murder mystery. But she's always championed women, and that's why I love her so much. Yeah. I wonder what she would think about. <laughs> Let's remake Band of Gold, but let's put men in all those parts. Ooh. She'd be horrified, <laughs> right? Ooh. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do there. I still think there should be a female James Bond. You, I you do. don't! I do. I la, think la, 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 la! Why not? Why not? You know, it's Shouldn't a, there just be yeah. a female spy, though, with her own name? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well. Rather yeah. than piggybacking into something that that's... Yeah. But then Doctor Who did really well, didn't it, with Jodie Whittaker playing Doctor Who? Everyone yeah. loved her. And but that's a, a role job. where they it regenerates yeah. all the time, yeah. isn't it? You can explain that. You can't explain James Bond suddenly turning into a woman. Well, I suppose you can these days. <laughs> well, maybe my mum can write the new well, a female spy. We're leaving it up to her. Definitely. <laughs> so I was actually really interested in the fact that you're Buddhist. Yes. I've always been considering, you know, sort of converting because I'm sort of in touch with my spiritual side. Okay. Like, I just wanted to know more about that and why you did it and stuff, because I find that oh. so interesting. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. Um, <laughs> well, I became a Buddhist um, in 1994 because um, I was doing a show, a um, theatre show. I seemed to have everything materialistic that I needed. You know, I had the, the boyfriend, the car, the great job as an actress. I was in a show, a successful show. But I kind of had that, you know, overwhelming Empty, of yeah. emptiness yeah. and feeling depressed and low, low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the girls in the show called Jilly Tompkins. Um, she always glowed, you know, she had this glow about her. I remember thinking, I must ask her what moisturiser she uses because she's, <laughs> she's got this beautiful skin and aura. So I went up to her and I said to her, um, can I just ask you what face cream, <laughs> really shallow, what face cream you use? And she went, oh, no, darling, that's not the face cream. I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, yeah. well, can I have a bit of that? <laughs> and, she, and she just went, yeah, whenever you want. So mm -hmm. she started to teach me how to say Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and yeah. invite me oh, to, yeah, Nam Myoho Renge yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so what it does is when I chant on the morning and an evening, yeah. I chant to raise my life state. Yeah. So, you know, like on the morning, you'll, come, you'll have all sorts of emotions going on from being happy, sad, down, yeah. depressed, up, you know. I chance to be able to have a life state that's got courage, compassion and wisdom mm. and take the right action for all those emotions. Yeah. And mm. Yeah, it's just... It just a, grounds you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's for myself and for others. Mm -hmm. I chance for myself and others. I feel like it would be so good for the younger generation with social media to get away from that and do definitely. things like... Yeah. Need to mm. channel it does, that through, um, yeah, it does definitely. help a lot. Save Definitely. on face cream as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really works. Cream. My goodness me. Thank you so much, Kenner. It's great to see you. Great to see you.